God's name is the big cheese, specifically mozzarella cheese, a fried mozzarella cheese stick from TGI Fridays, a 700 foot long fried mozzarella cheese stick from TGI Fridays. God's name is clunk. Clunk is the sound it makes when your favorite baseball player hits a game winning home run off the foul pole. You see, it's called the foul pole, but that's actually a misnomer because it's in fair territory. So if the ball hits it, it's a home run, and all the little kids watching the game are happy at the same time. Well, except for the kids in the other city, they're kind of pissed off. But when you think about it, God has a way of screwing over little kids. Like all those firstborn Egyptian sons. They weren't doing anything wrong, you know. Pharaoh was the one being an asshole. But God didn't kill Pharaoh. God just killed all those little boys. At this point in the poem, there comes a line I was instructed not to read because it was deemed too offensive for tonight's audience. The line is exactly one sentence long and contains no vulgar language or references to the human anatomy. It is offensive because in it, I equate the concept of God with an individual, a historical figure considered by many to be the epitome of human evil. I do this because I believe that God is all-encompassing. Rather than an external force, I believe that God is a spirit that exists inside every atom of every molecule in the universe. So therefore, the concept of God includes the entire spectrum of human experience, from the things we consider most beautiful to the things we consider most ugly. I put the offensive line at this point in the poem because I wanted to reinforce the Jewish idea that man is created in the image of God. As I just illustrated with the example from Exodus, God, from time to time, takes the form of the angel of death. Which means that when man takes the form of the angel of death, he continues to exist in the image of God. Now at this point in my tangent, you might be wondering, Jason, if you're willing to describe and explain this censored line so mechanically, why not just go ahead and read it to us? The answer to that lies in the difference between poetry and expository prose. The aim of expository prose is to communicate ideas clearly and efficiently, as I've been doing with the last few paragraphs. Ambiguity is frowned upon. Poetry, on the other hand, is often ambiguous because the aim of poetry is to distill language down to its very essence. When done effectively, this often packs an emotional punch. I was informed that certain members of tonight's audience are simply not prepared to be punched in such an emotional way, and this is a fact I can both acknowledge and respect. So where was I? Oh yes. God's name is Nike because Nike is a damn comfortable shoe. It may be true that Nikes are made by child slaves in Cambodia, but, as I already explained, God doesn't seem to mind picking on little kids. God's name is Depo Provera. Depo Provera is a hormonal method of birth control which allows a male and female human being to experience the sensation of internal vaginal ejaculation without having to stress out about potential baby making, which is nice. God's name is Dave Matthews Band. God's name is marijuana. God's name is God's name is Beaver McTwat Twat. God's name is Jesus Christ. God's name is Samuel L. Jackson, and God is one bad motherfucker. Say hello, shoosh. You is a dog. You is a dog. You is on the camera. Oh, and it's me, Speakers. Hello, me, Speakers. You're so little.